गुड इवनिंग गाइस गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग हाउ आर यू गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग ओके सो हाउ आर यू आर यू रेडी फॉर द एग्जाम यस सर यस सर सर प्लीज स्टार्ट द रिकॉर्डिंग सर लुकिंग स्मार्ट सर <laughs> thank you and okay guys so i hope like everyone is ready for your final exam and yeah only one more day left okay so my only uh, advice is at this moment as already i discussed with you uh, in the last session so you guys should not get much stressed okay so that's the most important thing and uh, as already you have been working hard for the last four months so you have been uh, studying every day and you have done all our mocks okay, including the grand test and i guess everyone have got up to 80% to 90% in the mocks and the grand test isn't it guys what's your scores in yes, the mocks and the grand test yes sir at least like for everyone have got uh, 80 or 90% at least in the uh, not in the first attempt but in the second or in the subsequent attempts you guys might have got 80 to 90% in your uh, mocks okay so it means that definitely even in your final exam yeah atiya 90 to 97% that's very good so even in your final exam your questions will be like when when you see the questions on your screen so you definitely you will get the same type of the questions okay so it means that you should not uh, get much stressed okay so the only thing is that uh, at this moment you need to have put confidence among yourself okay so you need to have a lot of confidence okay so that's the most important thing and the other things are like i just want to share a few things uh, with you guys like how the exam pattern will be and what are the things that you need to do uh, a day before the examination like most of you have got the exam on monday isn't it so some of you have got the exam on monday right i so, have on tuesday yeah yeah so especially for those who uh, are giving the exam on the first day that is the day one okay so they will be having a lot of nervous uh, they will be a, uh, a bit nervous and um, a lot of things will be going on in their mind but don't uh, get stressed okay so have a good sleep and uh, rest well especially tomorrow which is on sunday and because definitely on the day of your exam like on uh, on the in the final examination so you will get all the questions that whatever that you have practiced okay and all the concepts that you have learned so you will get only from uh, those parts so you guys should not uh, get much uh, stress about your exam okay but however guys i just want to share a few things a uh, few tips regarding the examination with you so i will present i will start presenting my slide okay so before that do you have any questions or can we have any question sessions like if, if you have got any questions then we can do it at the end okay so at first i will uh, present you a short slide okay can you see this slide guys yes sir okay thank you so here are few um, things that you need to do like a day before the examination and there are few tips that uh, you need to follow uh, for your exam okay so that's what um, i am going to present today and as already we have covered all our syllabus and everything okay so we are not talking about uh, any thing related to the subject today okay because everything is uh, done including the mocks and all the discussions have been done so a day before the examination especially for those who have the examination on monday that is uh, tomorrow which is sunday okay so my advice is a day before the examination whenever it is your exam either it is on monday tuesday or wednesday it doesn't matter um, but a day before your exam try to um, arrange all the documents aside okay and try to organize all the documents and put it aside okay so what are the documents the main documents that you need to carry so you must carry your passport so that is mandatory 
So you must carry your original passport with you. Okay. So without your original passport, Pearson won't allow you to sit for the exam. Okay. So this is the mandatory. So you must carry your original passport. And along with original passport, actually Pearson, it asks you to um, bring two documents. So one is the passport, which contains your photo in it, as well as uh, your address and so on. And the other one, you can carry your driver's license. If you have got the driver's license, then you can carry your driver's license. Okay. Or if you don't have the driver's license, you can carry any of your national ID card. Like for those who are in India, they can carry their Aadhaar card, okay. so which is a national ID card. And even in other countries as well, they will issue some national ID cards. So if you have got those national ID cards, then you can carry the national ID card. Okay. And or you can carry your credit card, which clearly displays your name. Okay. So the credit card, if you are carrying your credit or the debit card, the card, the bank card, it should contain the full name on it. Okay. And in case if you don't have uh, your credit card or if you don't have the driver's license, okay, uh, if you have any insurance document, okay, uh, insurance document like your uh, vehicle insurance, like car insurance document, or any of the insurance document which clearly shows your name, full name in it, okay. So even you can carry those things. But always I advise to all the students to carry at least three or four documents with you, okay. So don't rely on one or two documents. Okay? One is passport. Passport, uh, passport is the mandatory. So there is no exemption for it. So you must carry your original passport. And along with the original passport, always I advise to carry at least two or three additional documents. Okay. So the reason why I advise to carry uh, the additional documents is sometimes there will be a name discrepancy in, uh, in, in your documents. Okay. Like in your original passport, okay, the name it will be indicated like say, for example, my name is spelled as Arif, A-R-I-E-F. Okay, so A R I E F is my first name. Okay, but uh, in my national ID card, it is just mentioned as A R I F. Okay, so when they check my uh, original passport as well as my Pearson booking uh, booking slot, in my booking slot it also uh, says that A R I E F. Okay, but in my national ID card, it is just mentioned as A R I F. Okay, so there is a name discrepancy here. If there is a name discrepancy, then Pearson will never allow you to sit for the exam. Okay, so there will be a strict rule with the Pearson. Uh, if if there is any name discrepancy, then they will never allow you to sit for the exam. So that's why whatever be the documents that you carry, so make sure that the same name should be spelled in all the documents. Okay, like you want uh, the name which you have registered with Pearson, that is the name which you have registered with APC. Okay. So that name should ma uh, match with the original passport. The spelling should match exactly with the original passport. And the same spell spelling, it should match with your driver's license or national ID or credit card or any other document that you carry. Okay. So this is the first important thing that uh, you need to know. Okay. So if there is any name discrepancy, then they will never allow you to appear or sit for the exam. Okay. So a day before the examination, Try to organize everything. Okay, make sure that you uh, you need to put it in a bag and your backpack should be ready. Okay, so everything should be ready and you need to put it aside. Okay, so try to organize everything a day before your examination. Then, on the day of exam, okay, so you need to carry all the original documents, not the photocopies, not the photocopy of your driver's license, or not the photocopy of your national ID card, or not the photocopy of your passport, because uh, they will never allow you allow you to sit for the examination in case if you carry the photocopies okay so you need to carry all the original documents and in case if your exam slot is at nine o'clock in the morning okay so try to arrive to the exam center at least one hour before okay so always try to make sure that you reach at least one hour before uh, your exam time it starts okay so if the if your booking slot is at nine arrive at eight o'clock in the morning Okay. And in case, like most of you uh, might be uh, thinking that you can revise quickly, uh, like one hour before the examination. If you want to revise, that's fine. Okay, So you can still do the revision, but take all the books, carry your books or the materials along with you to the exam center. Okay, But try to reach there one hour before 
let's say for instance if your exam is at nine o'clock then try to reach there at eight o'clock okay? and there you will be having one one hour time then you can keep on revising your um, material and so on whatever be the notes that you carry with you okay so this is to avoid any sort of delays like traffic jam and any other uh, issues okay so try to make sure that you start at least um, at one one and a half hour before your booking slot and try to reach within half an hour up over there it means that it should be at least one hour gap between your examination okay so the uh, starting of your booking slot okay? and even if you reach the exam center you can still wait outside uh, outside or there will be a waiting lobby over there in all the Pearson centers there will be a waiting lobby there you can uh, sit and you can read your uh, material and so on but make sure that you need to enter inside and reach to the like you need to go to the registration desk at least 30 minutes before your exam let's say for instance if your exam is at 9 9 a.m then at least by 8 30 you need to be at the registration desk because it takes at least 15 minutes time to uh, do the registration process at the pearson like they will take uh, your uh, palm impressions and also they will check all your pockets and so on okay so it takes at least 15 minutes time per registration so make sure that you need to be on time okay before uh, like at least 30 minutes before the registration desk okay and also you will be provided with an erasable laminated sheets and markers. So on the day of examination in Pearson, they will give you some erasable sheets, laminated sheets, okay, and also the markers. And like at least they will provide you uh, five or six sheets, erasable sheets, and two markers, at least two markers. But sometimes what happens is, in case if you won't uh, put the cap of the marker, then the marker, it won't work properly. So if you have any issues with the marker or if your erasable sheet has already filled, so you can write anything on the erasable sheet. OK, so once after entering into the examination center, so you can write anything that you want. Like when once the exam is started, if you want to note down any important points that you recall in your brain, then you can uh, note all those points on the erasable sheet. OK, so and in case if uh, all the sheets are filled, then don't waste time by erasing the sheets. Okay, so just you, what you need to do is in person you need to raise your hand. So when once you raise your hand, then immediately the proctor will approach to you, and the proctor will help you in bringing the new sheets. Or in case if sometimes the markers they won't work properly, and uh, it happens with many students. So what they need to do is just they need to raise their hand then immediately the proctor will reach to the candidate and just you need to tell to the proctor that you need the markers or you need the uh, few more uh, erasable sheets then the proctors they will bring the new markers or the erasable sheets to you okay so don't hesitate as many as you want you can just keep on asking them so they will bring the they will take the old sheets back and they will bring the fresh sheets to you Okay. The same goes with the marker as well. If the marker is not working, don't hesitate. Just raise your hand and they will bring the new markers to you. And on the day of examination, do not carry any electronic gadgets with you into the examination center. Like into the examination center in the sense, like you can still carry your mobile and your watches and so on okay, to Pearson Center. But they, they will provide you a locker in Pearson centers, all the centers, there will be uh, lockers will be available. So you need to put your bag, your books, and your mobile, and your other electronic gadgets, everything in that locker. Okay. So you are not allowed to carry any uh, electronic gadgets with you except the calculator. Okay. So you can carry your uh, own calculator with you into the uh, center, but uh, not the other electronic gadgets. And even this calculator, in some centers they will allow to carry the calculator but in some centers they may not allow you to even carry the calculator okay so it happened with me back in uh, 2017 when i took my exam pearson center in hyderabad in uh, hyderabad in india so they uh, didn't allow the calculator to me okay so because they said that already there will be an online calculator available on the screen and i can use that calculator so i have used the same uh, like the online calculator which is already available on the screen 
So in case if they won't allow the calculator, don't be panic. Okay. So that's fine because already on the screen you can uh, access the calculator. Okay. So and that calculator will have the same functions that what all your um, scientific calculator like the Casio has got. So all the functions will be in that uh, calculator, okay, which is available on the screen. Okay. And at first, like before the examination starts, you will be given enough time to familiarize yourself with the Pearson exam pattern. Okay. So like at least you can take five minutes or up to 10 minutes, it doesn't matter. You need not to rush. Okay. So you can take some time to have a look, like you can do some demo, that is the mock on it. Okay. So there will be a uh, mock test will be displayed. So you can uh, do it and you can, you can, by doing that mock or by doing that demo, so you will come to know that how, um, like how to navigate on the Pearson screen. Like for example, if you are at question number two, if you want to go back on to question number one, then what you need to do, okay, how you need to go back. Okay, so everything that you can see in that uh, demo session okay? and that's, initial the starting demo it will be for five minutes or ten minutes so you can take your full time okay it doesn't matter but if you are already familiarized with the pearson pattern okay, then you can directly uh, go into the main test into the real test okay but if you want you can take the time up over there uh, because this time it won't get counted in your exam okay then when once you are familiarized with the pearson exam pattern Okay. Uh, once you have done that demo, then you need to click to the begin test. Okay, when you click the begin test button up over there, your real uh, exam it starts. It means that your countdown will start. Okay, so we know that paper one. At first, you will start with uh, your paper one. Okay, so uh, you will you will like the paper one will uh, start and the first question will appear on the screen. Okay. And on the right hand side, on the right top corner, so the timer will be displayed. Like we know that uh, the time is for two hours, that is 120 minutes. And within 120 minutes, you guys need to answer 100 MCQs, 100 questions related to paper one. Okay. So the timer, it starts and it will be displayed on the uh, right top of the corner of the screen. Okay. And you will at, at first you will start with your paper one, and you guys know that in paper one the main questions or the main uh, content will be chemistry, physiology, and pharmacology. So most of the times when you start your exam on the screen, the first questions that comes on the screen are the chemistry related questions. Okay, so this is what it happened with many students those who took their uh, exam before the CAPS exam before. So the first questions the first few questions will be chemistry related questions but it doesn't matter sometimes the computer the system it it randomly picks the questions even sometimes you may get the physiology question at the first okay followed by the chemistry questions or pharmacology questions then physiology then chemistry or like randomly it may get mixed up okay but don't worry anyhow however the computer it picks the questions but uh, the main thing that you need to know is there will be 30% weightage for chemistry part. It means that if there are 100 questions, at least 30 questions will be from chemistry and 70% weightage for physiology and pharmacology. It means that there will be 70 questions from physiology and pharmacology. But however, from physiology, hardly they will ask around 10 or 15 questions and the rest of the questions will be pharmacology related questions. Okay, so in this way, like equally they will distribute as per the percentage, like 30% for chemistry and 70% for physiology and pharmacology. Okay. And when once you finish your paper one, and also in paper one at the end, like uh, for question number 95, 96 to 100, for the last five questions, uh, there will be a case scenario. Okay. So you need to read the case and you need to answer the last five questions. And most of the times, like not most of the times, uh, all the questions which are presented in the case scenario, they are standalone questions. It means that if you answer one of the question, that, that is the first question incorrect. Okay. So, and if you answer the second question as correct, then you will be given the score for the second question. Okay. So the, all the questions are not interrelated. They are standalone questions. Okay. 
And when once you fin finish all the 100 questions in paper one, and when you submit and when you click the finish button, and uh, finally, when you submit it, then your paper one will get successfully submitted. Okay. And when once you have done the paper one, then you will be given an optional break. So this optional break will be for one hour. Okay. And if you want, you can take this optional break only for 10 minutes or for 15 minutes or 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or the maximum one hour. However, the proctor will let you know Okay. So the proctor will, uh, by the time when you finish the paper one, you need to raise your hand. The proctor will uh, come to you and the proctor will take you to the main registration desk. Okay. And there the proctor will let you know that uh, you have got an optional break. Um, if you want, you can come back within 10 minutes and you can start your exam. Or if you want, you can come back in 30 minutes or the maximum is one hour. But uh, my advice is don't stay up to one hour outside. Okay, so try to back in case if you are taking the full one hour optional break, then try to back, be back by within forty five minutes. But because here again, when you come back, you need to uh, do the registration once again. Okay, so again you need to go with the uh, you need they, they will do the palm, palm impressions as well as they will check your pockets and so on. So everything will be done during uh, when once you finish your optional break okay, before you go to the paper two. Okay, so but always my advice every time I advise to the students is take some break. Okay, at least take ten minutes break, go to toilet, okay, drink some water, and refresh yourself. Okay, and uh, come back and sit for the exam. And the other thing, the important thing that you can uh, you need to know is during this break time, if you want, you can access your all the books and materials that you have brought. Okay, so during this break time, if you want, you can open your locker. Okay? They will allow you to open the locker and allow you to uh, access all your books and materials. So quickly, if you want to uh, refer through all the formulas related to calculations, then you can uh, do that. But if you are confident that if you are confident enough, if you don't want to refer all the formulas and so on, then that's fine. You need not to open the books. Just relax, okay? uh, drink some water, stay for uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes. It's up to you. Okay? Relax and then go back. Okay? And after you go back, you need to start doing your paper two. And in paper two, as you guys know that, in paper two, the main components are pharmaceutics and then pharmacotherapy. Okay, so therapeutics and pharmaceutics are the two main components of paper two. For pharmaceutics, the weightage is thirty percent, and for therapeutics, the weightage is seventy percent. And we all know that in paper two, it consists of the calculations. So all the calculations will be in paper two. Okay, in paper one, there won't be any calculations. The, all the calculations you will uh, find only in paper two. It means that you need to carry your calculator with you. In case if they are allowing you to carry the calculator inside, then you can carry your calculator. But in some centers, they may say that uh, already you can find the calculator, which is online, and it will be uh, displayed on the screen. Then you can access it from there. Okay. And as you guys know that, each paper it consists of 100 MCQs. Okay, so even in paper two, when you finish your paper two, okay, uh, like uh, before you submit, there are a few important things that I will uh, go it later. Okay, but make sure that uh, you need to answer all the questions because there are no negative marks in the CAPS examination. So even if you don't know the correct answer, just put some option. Okay, so even if you don't know the correct answer. Just try to put some option because there is no negative marking. Okay, so try to put some answer. Okay, and make sure that you have answered all the hundred questions, hundred MCQs. And regarding the time management. Okay, so this is the most uh, important thing. In paper one, everyone can easily manage the time. It's not a big deal. Like most of the times, the students they will finish the paper one. If, if it is for uh, two hours, then most of the times the students they will finish the paper one in within one and a half hour. Okay, so like it means that there will be extra thirty minutes will be left. But especially when it comes to the paper two, the time management is most important one because in paper two you will be having calculations. So it means that you need to do calculation. 
there will be a few calculations which are quite simple. Let's say, for instance, if there are around uh, 15 calculations, so out of 15 calculations, at least uh, eight calculations, okay? eight calculations will be uh, simple and straightforward, like those uh, calculations and so on. Okay, so that's whatever you have practiced with us. Okay, uh, like the simple calculations. So at least eight calculations will be quite straightforward and simple ones. It means that hardly it takes only one minute time for you to solve the answer. But the rest of them, like five to six or up to seven calculations will be uh, like uh, need to calculate the T-half based calculations or bioavailability based calculations. So those things, it will take a little bit time. Okay, Like uh, sometimes they may consume up to two minutes time. So because of these calculations, it takes a little bit time. And also, in therapeutics, most of the questions, there won't be straightforward questions. It means that all the questions will be application-based questions. So you need to think a lot before you answer the questions. Okay, So that's the another challenge in paper two. So that's why paper two consumes like uh, a lot of time. Okay, So in order to answer each question in paper two, it takes time. Okay, So you, but however, you need to uh you need to calculate your time okay uh, you need to organize yourself in such a way that at least you should do each question within one minute okay so at least you need to finish each question within one minute for paper two not only for paper two even for paper one you need to finish each question in one minute that's that should be the ideal target for everyone okay. but in case if you are struggling if you uh, don't know the correct answer okay then what you need to do is don't waste your time by staying at that question for a long time okay so you, if you don't know the answer what you need to do is just you need to flag the question so you will be given in the pson uh, exam in the final exam you will be given an option to flag your question okay so you need to flag the question and you need to move to the next question so let's say, for instance, when you are when you have started doing your exam, so you have done the first four questions, and you are uh, not sure about the answer for the fifth question. Okay, so in that case, just you need to flag that fifth question and move on to the sixth question. Okay, and keep on doing the rest of the questions. And again, if you don't know the answer for the fifteenth question, then flag the question number fifteen. Okay? In such a way, just keep on flagging the questions and try to finish the rest of the questions as soon as possible. Okay, So if you keep on thinking much about the question where you are not sure about the answer, okay, and if you waste a lot of time up over there, then you won't get enough time to finish all the other questions. Okay, So sometimes the students, they will miss the last few questions, like 10 or 15 questions, due to the lack of the time. Okay, So that thing should never happen. Okay. So make sure that you should uh, you should need to answer all the questions. Okay, so don't uh, like uh, you should not run out of the time. And always when you flag the questions, my advice is don't flag more than ten questions. Okay, so if possible, try to make uh, as small as possible. Like uh, don't flag more than ten questions because again, all the flagged questions. Once again, you need to go back and revise them and then answer those questions so it means that you may not have you may not be having enough time at the end to do the revision if you have flagged like around 25 questions then you won't be having enough time to keep on uh, answering all the 25 questions so that's why as much as possible try to solve the question within one minute okay but if you are not confident and if uh, if you if you are sure that this question will take like at least two minutes time to think about it, then you flag that question. Okay. And make sure that at the end, when you finish all the questions, okay, you, you should save at least 15 to 20 minutes, okay, uh, 20 minutes time to go back and revise all the flagged questions. Okay. So here, what happens is when you flag the questions, in, in Pearson's uh, website, there will be an option like there you can see on the top of the screen, flagged questions. When you click the flagged over there, then only all the flagged questions will be displayed. 
Okay. So all the flagged questions will be displayed. It means that if you have flagged only eight questions, then only those eight questions will be displayed. So it means that you need not to revise, you need not to go back from the beginning, that is from question number one, and keep on uh, searching that which question you haven't answered. Okay. So just if you click, if you click the flag option, all the eight or ten questions that you have flagged, only those eight questions will be displayed on the screen. Then what you need to do now, you read the question, okay? Uh, think about it and give the answer, okay? And finish all the flag questions. So when once you finish all the flag questions and you have done all the hundred questions, then at the end you can submit your answers, okay? So again in pearson you will be given like in your final exam you will uh, have the complete uh, access like you can go back to your first question okay and you can revise all the 100 questions if you want quickly you can do that and if you want you can change the options as well like let's say for example if question number 1 initially you have put option a but later on when you have revised during revision quick revision if you have found that Okay, it is not the correct answer, but D is the correct answer. Then you can change your option over there. Okay, so unless and until you click the submit button, your uh, questions won't get submitted. Okay, so you will be having your complete uh, access. Like you can go back. You can, if you want, you can change the answers. Okay, and when once you have done, then you can submit your answers. Okay, so. This is about the exam pattern, guys. On on the day of exam, try to be on time and uh, try to be confident. Okay, and I'm sure that definitely you will ace your exam. You will get uh, the good results and definitely you will pass with uh, flying colors. Okay, so don't uh, worry much about your examination. And Elite Expertise wishes you all the best for your CAPS examination. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, then you guys can ask me now. So do we have to carry any appointment confirmation letter or reprinted? Or yes, yes, you need to take your uh, booking confirmation. Like, uh, I guess you guys have got your email, email yeah. from the person. So just you need to carry that uh, email. You need to show them your uh, booking confirmation along with your ID documents. Like we need the hard copy or the we can show from the mobile is enough. Mobile is enough soft copy they will uh, accept, but if you want, you can print the hard copy. That's up to you. But if you have the soft copy, then if you show the soft copy, then that's enough. So just the appointment con confirmation is enough, not the payment details, nothing is required. No, 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 no. They don't want that's all those details. Okay. So just your uh, appointment confirmation letter that you have received from the PSN. So uh, that letter that you need to show on that day. Answer the results will be displayed at the same time when we finish all the papers or not? Which results? <laughs> the exam for paper one and paper two. No, 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 you won't get the result now. So you need to wait. You need to uh, wait for at least the ideal time is like they will show uh, six to eight weeks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in the Pearson, uh, yeah, Atiya has given the answer that is on 8th of August, you will get your result. Okay. Already uh, they will show it. Uh, in Pearson website, so not in Pearson website, in APC website, in APC website, they will uh, give the date, like already they have displayed the date that is 8th of August, you will get your result. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, any other questions, guys? You I have one question. Yes, Kanva. Uh, sir, for example, I run out of time and I didn't click on submit button would it be sent it doesn't matter it doesn't matter like this is the common thing like most of the times uh, the students they have asked me okay and they were scared that after finishing the exam they said that uh, they called me and said that sir i forgot to submit the button uh, will will they consider or they give zero score for me okay uh, they won't uh, give any zero score so if you even if you run out of the time if you won't uh, submit uh, at the end if you won't uh, submit your answers so the system the computer will automatically take all the questions that you have answered okay and it will mark to those questions 
okay so don't worry about it if even if you haven't submitted if you haven't clicked the submit button so still you will uh, your answers will get uh, submitted okay and the system will consider it thank you sir yeah thank you any other questions guys hello sir yes santosh uh is there some sort of a problem it might occur in examination that we should have to report to that prompter i think in the past last batch i think they received um, exam uh, for no for this july i think that sort of message i see in last batch so i just want to clear what uh, sort of a problem sorry, might occur sorry, santosh, santosh can you repeat the question again i just want to know that sir uh, if if there is some sort of a problem in computer or some sort uh, of a software problem might occur in while giving exam should we have to report them immediately uh, while yeah, in yeah, the exactly. station yeah. yeah so what you need to do is if if you have any issues with the uh, computer okay then immediately you yes. need to raise your hand okay then uh, the proctor will come and fix that issue and at the same time they will deduct the time whatever uh, the time you it has uh, got wasted like if, if it has took like 10 minutes or 15 minutes okay then they will deduct those 15 minutes time it means that they will give okay. the 15 minutes extra time for you to finish your exam okay but okay so that's that's the that's the that concern i just want yeah to but know. sometimes like um due to some unpredictable conditions if the examination itself if it get cancelled like due to uh, some heavy rainfalls or due to cyclones or something it happened like last batch um, there were students who were giving the exam in a small island what's the name fiji yeah yeah fiji, it happened yeah. in fiji yeah yeah it happened in fiji so they have completely they have cancelled the exam okay but uh, okay. the psn it has uh, uh, it allowed the candidates to do the exam like after finishing the exam so like now the exam slots on 17 18 19th okay but yes. they allowed the candidates to uh, do the exam on uh, 20th okay. so it happened okay. with, they can uh, extend, extend to another day as also if uh, some yeah, yeah, problem like might also that yeah so if there is any okay, some so. um, such things happens okay then they will uh, most of the times they will allow to do the exam later okay sir thank you sir okay yeah thanks santosh any other questions guys sir if we finish our exam in of paper 1 in 1 and a half hour then immediately our break is starts or we have to wait for half an hour more No, no, no. You need not to wait for half an hour more. Like in case if you finish your exam within one and half hour, okay. If you are confident that you have done all the hundred questions, okay, and um, if you are confident, then you can submit your uh, paper one, okay. So when you submit your paper one, it means that you have done. Then uh, just raise your hand. The proctor will come to you, okay, and uh, you need to tell that you have finished successfully. You have done the paper one. and the proctor will ask you do you need any break okay so if you want to um, go and have some break then again you need to go to the registration counter then uh, tell them that you are going for 30 minutes break or you want to take the full one hour break okay so that's up to you so the break time will start from there and you need to come back like 10 minutes before the break time it ends any other questions guys uh, yes sir uh, sir uh, i'm jayshree and uh, i have a issue with that uh, documents as per the passport and exam registration my name is uh, full name jayshree kunakattil but all the other indian documents uh, my name is uh, in jayshree k only uh, is there any problem sir i'm not sure jayshree like uh... in passport it uh, have you got the full name like full name, yeah. kunakati yes sir kunakati yeah, but, but uh, uh, how about in in apc in apc website is also jayasri kunakati right uh, yes sir then have you got your driver's license or aadhar card or uh, yes sir but all the other documents have the name jayasri k 
Okay. So uh, you haven't put any any document which shows the full name? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, I have uh, one and same certificate from uh, registration authority from Kerala. Uh, okay. But, uh, it shows the name as per the passport. Is okay. it here for? Yeah, just carry that document as well. Yeah. Okay. okay. And uh, tell them, explain them clearly that uh, this is uh, happened. Like in all the other documents, it just uh, came as Jayasri, uh, dot k. Okay. But in my passport, they gave the full surname. Okay. So okay. everything that you need to explain up over there. Okay. So try okay. to convince them. Like sometimes they they will never listen in Pearson Center. They will never listen. So if there is any discrepancy, then they will say that they don't allow the candidates. But you need to. So that's why I always advise to carry at least two or three documents, extra documents, okay, to uh, show them and to uh, prove yourself that you you are the one and the same person as per your passport and as per the uh, exam booking slot. Okay, so you must try to uh, carry at least two documents or three documents, four documents, whatever it is possible. So try to make sure that you carry the documents which shows uh, at least the same name. OK, sir. Okay, thank you, okay. sir. So, so don't worry, Jayasri, but uh, try to carry the additional documents which shows the full name on it. OK, OK, sir. OK? OK, thank you. Sir. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions, guys? Yes, Vikram. Any other questions? Yes, you can ask Vikram. Hello. Yes, hello, Vikram. Sorry, Vikram, your voice is not audible. Let me type in the chat box. Hello, Vikram. Yeah, Vikram, your voice is not audible. Let me type in the chat box. Okay, okay, you can type. Any others? Uh, one more thing quickly, sir. Um, can we see unanswered question, or you can't Sorry, see can what you? you? Can you able to see unanswered? Like, if you miss one or two in between, quickly, can you see them on the top of the computer, or you can't? No, no, you can't see. You can't see them. Like in case, in case if you miss the answer, miss. Uh, if you, in case if you miss answering the question, okay, and if you haven't flagged it, let's say for example, you are doing all the questions, okay. So you are at question number twenty-one, and when you have moved to question number twenty-two, you don't know the answer, and without flagging it, you have, you have skipped to question number twenty-three, okay. So it means that. Uh, the computer it won't show you at the end that you haven't answered that question number 22 okay is it clear guys if you are not sure about the answer if you if you are not giving the answer at the uh, like uh, at that spot what you need to do is you need to flag it okay so otherwise it becomes much difficult to revise each and every question to check if you have answered or not so it becomes a uh, difficult task at the end. So to avoid those things, if you don't know the answer, flag and move. Okay? Then it becomes easy for you to uh, revise or to quickly check all the flagged questions. Okay? Any other questions, guys? Sir, I have a question. Okay. Scott, if we not remove flag in the end before submitting, and does we have? Sorry, uh, I'm just reading what Vikram has uh, sent the message. Is there any impact on score if we not remove flag in the uh, end before submitting? And does we have different color flag options or a single yellow color flag? So there will be only one color flag. Okay? There won't be any different color flags. Okay, So there will be only one color flag. And there won't be any impact on the score. Like if you have, on, if you have revisited the uh, flagged questions, and if you have answered all the flagged questions, it means that you have done all the questions. If you, let's say, for example, if you have flagged 10 questions, 
but you have revisited and answered only six questions and the rest of the four you haven't uh, answered it it means that you have left as it is okay and you ran out of the time it means that for the rest of the four your score will be zero because you haven't answered anything for it okay but for the six flagged questions, as you have already revisited and you have answered the questions, so for these six flagged questions, they will give the score. Is it clear, Vikram, now? OK, thank you. Sir, I have a question again. It's regarding my name also. Because in my passport, uh, I don't yeah. have a name. I just have my given name as Javish. That's a full name, only two names okay. in it. And then like uh, we have this issue with the surname given him every time, even in my Commonwealth car in Australia. I have like Mr. Hyphen Javid Shah, but in my photo card, there's nothing like hyphen or anything. And even in the Pearson, when I was like, uh, I mean, sorry, in the APC side, there is nothing like hyphen or anything. It's just like Javid Shah. So that won't be a problem, right? Yeah, it shouldn't be like, um, but as I advise that always carry few documents. Okay. So yeah. it, the main thing is that they will, they will check your uh, name in the APC site. That is how you did your booking. Okay. Yeah. And you cross check the same name on your passport. Okay. So that name, uh, the name which is there on the APC booking site and the name on your passport, even the spellings and even the, if there is a dot, okay, like if my name is Mohammed dot Arif, okay, then that dot should even that uh, same dot, it should be displayed. Like it should be shown on my passport as well. Okay. So even if there is a dot, then that dot should also match. Okay, so they will uh, cross check the same name on the passport. Okay, so now if you are APC booking site, the name on the APC booking and uh, the name on your passport, if they both have been matched. It means that your first document verification has been done. Okay, and now they need the second document to be verified. Okay, and they will ask you what is the second document that you have got. Okay, so uh, if you have got the credit card. Okay. And uh, the name again, it should match exactly with that of your passport and the APC booking site. Or if you have got any national ID or any uh, driver's license or any other uh, government issued card, okay, then uh, that name should exactly match to your passport and to the APC booking site. So that's why make sure you guys need to carry like in case if there is any discrepancy, if if, if it is clear, if it is everything clear, like your uh, name on the passport and your name on the driver's license, okay, they both are spelled correctly. Okay, If there is no any discrepancy, then you need not to worry. So you just you can carry these two documents with you, like your passport and your driver's license. Yes, sir. But, in my case, like uh, the spelling, there are no dots, no nothing. Everything is fine. Even yeah, the then that's fine. Then that's fine. But only I'm concerned about this hyphen and uh, like a full stop. I'm like not sure, Javed, because I'm not the I'm not the Pearson uh, person up over there. Okay, I'm not the proctor, and I'm not the uh, one who is running the Pearson site. So uh, you need to check with them. Okay, mm -hmm. but okay. check with them. Okay, and that's why that's what I'm uh, telling right from the beginning. If you have any doubt, carry at least two or three extra documents. Okay. Okay. Sir. I get clear for you now. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. No worries. Okay, thank you. Any sir, other questions, guys? Sir. Yes, before, sub before submitting the answers, it will ask two times for submission or only one submit option and it will close close it immediately. Uh, the computer will give two options double check or only once we have to submit automatically the close uh it will close i guess like they will it will ask you uh i'm not sure but anyhow it will show the clear instructions up over there like okay. uh the first it will say that like finish and then uh like yeah uh, nikita is saying that only once okay? okay so only once like it will give the option like uh submit Okay. And if you click the submit button, then automatically it will get all the answers will get submitted. Okay. Once we answered the flag, the questions, we have to remove that flag. Otherwise, it you need to, to no, no, you, yeah, even if you don't remove the flag, it doesn't matter. Okay. okay. So once you revisit them okay, and check all the questions, like all the 10 flag questions will be displayed up over there. So make sure that uh, you keep on answering all the 10 flag questions, even if you don't know the answer just put some answer okay because as there is no negative marking 
so you can uh, give the answer for all the questions. Okay? So just put some answer and make sure that you have answered all the flag questions and make sure you have answered all the 100 questions. Okay? So not even a single question should be missed. All the 100 questions should be answered. Okay? Then you can click the Submit button. OK, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, sir? Suman. Yes? Uh, sir, I'm from Hyderabad. Now I'm in Sydney. So can okay. I show my photo ID card or uh, and uh, passport to them? Photo ID in the sense, which one? Photo ID of Australia. Of Australia? Yeah. Yeah, they will accept. But uh, have you got any other uh, documents up here in Australia? And credit card I have. Yeah, credit card. If you have the credit card, then you can uh, carry the credit card as well. OK. I think photo card sure, okay. will do sir, the same as is issued by the New South Wales government. Yeah. OK. okay. In New South Wales, they will issue a photo ID card? Yes. yes. If you don't oh. have license, you can get the identity proof. Like, that's photo card. Photo yes. ID card. Yeah, yeah. So, because uh, I'm not sure how it is in New South Wales. Because in Victoria, I never saw that photo ID card. OK. So uh, or else, can I show uh, other card of India? No, no. Here in Australia, I don't think they accept the other card. But as you are telling that you have got this photo ID card, okay? Yes. So carry this photo ID card and also your credit card, the bank card. Okay. okay. So just you carry uh, the two documents with you along with your original passport. Don't forget to carry the original passport, guys. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, then all the best for your exam. And after your exam, let's have a meeting once again. Like we, we can all uh, meet once again. Okay. So we can uh, discuss about the post exam review meeting. Okay. So just for uh, one hour, we can do a post exam review meeting. Okay. So I will uh, announce in the group. So like most probably like next Saturday, we can conduct a post exam uh, review meeting. Like in that meeting, I will explain you a few other things like what the next step that you need to do. Okay, as you have already done your caps, then what are the next steps that uh, you guys need to do? OK. OK, guys, thank you so much. And uh, I wish you all the best for your caps examination. And OK, <laughs> thank you. So thank you so yes, much. Sir. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you.